so the other day I was thinking about how here we are six months into 2020, and I really don't think that at the beginning of this year we had any inkling, any idea uh, that we would be experiencing all the things that we've been experiencing. Uh, it's funny to me, because I mean, the, what we're experiencing is not funny, but it, what I found kind of funny the other day I saw on a, a thing on Facebook where someone had posted it, looked back, they said, I'm going to be so glad when 2019 is over, because 2019 was so bad. And I thought when I saw that, I thought, nah, 2019 was pretty good. 2020 was just sitting around the corner going, hee. And uh, it's so true. We have just experienced some deep-seated stuff in our country. It began with a pandemic. These past uh, week, we have seen rioting, protests, peaceful protests along with some violent rioting in our country. I'm trying to figure out, you know, how to listen to people in the body of Christ, my black brothers and sisters who are hurting. I'm, I'm trying to love my brothers and sisters that are police officers that I love dearly. But just all this stuff, and, and wherever you're at in all this, trying to figure it out, the conversations you're having, I think we could all agree that this is a fearful time for a lot of people. Uh, this is a time where we are afraid. Some of you are still fearful of the pandemic, of course, because no matter what's been going on this week with the social unrest in our country, it's not went away. It's not like the coronavirus said, peace out, America, I'm, I'm going to go somewhere else. It, it's still here, and maybe you're fearful of that. Maybe you're, you know, things have started to open up. Things have opened up around our county and, and in our world and in our states and wherever you're at watching this. And, and for some people, they're like, woohoo! And, and there's a part of that for me. But I, I'm going to tell you a story where I was a little fearful. I went into a, a large retail store this week. And honestly, I was a little like, oh, gosh, because uh, I'm, I'm a little more cautious than the rest of y'all. And y'all may think I'm crazy because I'm cautious. But I was walking around a little scared. I was like, oh, my gosh, all you people going to make me sick because you don't believe in masks. And that's okay. I'm not shaming anyone if they don't. And you may think I'm silly because I wear one. But the point is, all right, the point is this. We, we're fearful. And some of you are fearful because you've lost your job. You don't know if it's ever going to come back. Some of you are fearful because you not only lost a job, you maybe lost a business. Some of you are fearful because you're sitting here maybe, I, I, I know for me, thinking, what in the world is going to come next? Well, we're going to talk today about fear. Because I think it, it, we need to. And the good thing is Jesus had a lot to say about it. I said in a video I put out earlier this week that uh, I'm going to go to Jesus for all my advice. I'm going to go to Jesus for my instruction. I'm going to go to Jesus for how I should treat people uh, who I love and how I should treat people who disagree with me and how I should treat people who are different than me. And I think when it comes to fear, I'm going to go to Jesus. And so we're going to look at some words of Jesus uh, over in the Gospel of John. And here's the thing. when we look, We're going to look at a couple of verses. And when we do this, I want you to understand what was going on as we dig into these verses. What Jesus, the context of what Jesus is about to say is Jesus has went to what they call the upper room. It's where he would institute uh, the first communion service, the first Lord's Supper, where he would break bread, take wine. He would institute this, that Christians are to do it from then on, that the bread symbolizes his body, the wine symbolizes his blood. And, and, and Jesus would spend a lot of time with his disciples explaining to them some really heavy concepts about the Holy Spirit, the kingdom of God. In that, he would weave in that, that he was going to be betrayed, that he was going to die, that he was going to leave them. And, and these disciples were troubled, they were distraught, they were fearful. Some of these guys, I still don't think, understood just what Jesus was going to have to go to, through, even though they'd been with him for three years. In the back of a few of their minds, they still thought, you know, Jesus is the Messiah and he is going to usher in a political revolution and get the Roman yoke of oppression off our neck. They didn't understand that he came for something so much more than that, to die for the sins of the world. This is the very night when Jesus would go into what was called the Garden of Gethsemane and he would have a night where he would be so troubled in his own spirit that he would be so distraught and praying that it says he literally sweated blood the Scriptures say. But in the midst of his own pain, his own struggle, having to face what he was about to face on the cross the, the next day, 
he would take the time to comfort his disciples. And these words are not just for those men, those 12 who were there on that night. They have been comfort for Christians ever since then. And so I want to share them with you. And here's, what, here's the first thing Jesus says. John 14, 1. He goes, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Man, I, I need to hear that this week. Don't let your heart be troubled. Maybe you need to hear that this week. And Jesus, Jesus says that, and He quantifies it. He says, here is why you don't have... And the heart, whenever you read about that in Scripture many times, the heart, when He says, don't let your hearts be troubled, it's not like He's a physician. He's not like He's my doctor going, hey man, now you need to lay off the fried chicken and the Krispy Kreme donuts, and, and your heart won't be troubled. He's not talking about your physical heart. He's, the heart, many times in Scripture, is symbolic of the essence of you. It's your spirit soul, your mind, your spirit, everything about you, your personality, all about you. It, it's the essence, the center of you, who you are. And, and Jesus is looking at these guys and saying, down deep at the center of who you are, don't be troubled. Don't live in fear. Don't be afraid. And, and he gives a quantifier. He says, here's why. He says, you believe in God, believe also in me. And Jesus, of course, equates himself with God because he is God. He's God in the flesh come to die for the sins of humanity and to die for your sins and my sins. And he proved that that was true when he rose again on the third day. But here's the thing. He is sitting there and he's telling them, you don't have to be troubled. You don't have to allow fear to rule you because you can believe in me. And another word for believe is trust. And you see, that that's what a relationship with Jesus is. It's not just an intellectual belief that you say, okay, I believe the claims of this Judean man, this guy who was a, a Jewish man who went to a cross, died, I believe he rose again, I believe that he is who he says he is, and I have an intellectual belief in that. It's more than that. It, it's faith. It is putting your faith, your hope, and your trust in the fact that you believe not just about Jesus, but you believe in Jesus. And so I say to that, you know, this is cliche, but it's true. We live by faith, not fear. And we can, we can deal with our fears because we have faith. And, and sometimes people hear that word faith, and we automatically think, well, that's some slogan on a motivational poster in an office or something you wear on your T-shirt. And I remember back when I was coming up as a young man, you had uh, all those shirts that said, no fear. And it was like a clothing brand. But... And we say, well, if I just have positive faith, if I just believe I can achieve, I'll make it. But that's not the faith that we're talking about here. Remember what Jesus said. He said, believe in me. Our faith has an object. Our faith is in a person that was more than just a person. It was Jesus. And, and when Jesus says that, okay, what we really got to say is, in these moments when I'm fearful... In this season, in this country we're in, when we don't know what's going to happen next, when we are fearful, do we still trust Jesus? Do we still trust our Creator who loved us enough to go and die for us? Now, now sometimes people will say, well, we live by faith, not fear, and they will think that faith means that there is no fear. But that's not quite right, because there are things you should be afraid of. There are healthy things you need to be afraid of. Clowns. Clowns you should be scared of. Now, if you're a clown watching this, I'm kidding, man. But honestly, you guys are a little creepy. But hey, God loves you. I love you. Jesus loves you. I guess I need to work on that one. But, but in all seriousness, there are certain things that are healthy fears. There are things that's right and okay to be afraid of. I'll give you an example. When I was a kid... I, I, I climbed everything. I was all over everything. If my mom didn't want me to get in the cookies, she had to put them way up high because I would climb the cabinets. And when I was a little kid, I was a toddler. I was got the bright idea I was going to climb on some stuff. What I didn't realize was my, uh, my mom had turned the stove on to do some cooking. And if you could see real close on my hand right here, there are scars across my fingers because little Heath, in his effort to climb the stove, went, oop, and put my hand on the stovetop, and it burned me. Well, guess what? After that, I had a filthy fear and a respect of the stove. I didn't climb on it anymore. 
I want my child, when she was little, to be afraid, not in an unhealthy way, but in a respectful way of things. And there, when you think of faith, faith is not the absence of fear. Faith is then to put your respect and your fear into something else. And, of course, the Old Testament and many of the psalmists said the, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And what they meant by that word fear was respect. And so when you live by faith, it doesn't necessarily mean that you live absent of fear. It just means you trust in the one who can deliver you through those things you're afraid of. God it was not taken by surprise by anything that's happened in the last six months. And He's got you in all this. And He's got me in all this. And sometimes I forget that and I'll get depressed and I'll get downhearted, but I have to remember He has got me in all this. And He has got you in all this. And so, you know, are you fueling your faith or are you fueling your fear? We're going to talk about that. But, but Jesus would go on. He's talking to these guys. He's telling them not to be troubled. He's trying to give them hope. And in verse 27, look at what he says. I, lo I love this. He goes on, John 14, 27. He's talking about them. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. He's talking about how they will be one with him, all that good stuff. And he says this. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not be afraid. Man, that is so good. You see, here's the thing. I do believe that we can let fear rob us of our peace. But Jesus here is telling us a beautiful truth. He is saying that you can have peace despite your circumstances. And there's a few things I see that we need to really remember in this. And it's the first thing is this, that the peace that Jesus gives is a gift. He says, I am giving you my peace. He's just told his disciples, I'm going to leave you and go to a place you can't go. I.e., I'm going to the cross and I'm going to go to the grave. And I'm going to rise again. They don't know that. But, but he says, I'm going to leave and go to a place you can't go. You can't come. You can't go and go through what he went through on the cross where not only did he die a horrific physical death, but he took the spiritual sins and the weight of the world upon himself. And Jesus said, you can't go there with me. But I'm going to leave you with something. I'm going to, I'm going to leave you my peace. A peace that he says, he goes on and he says, and it's not like the peace the world gives. You know, right now we are in an unpeaceful time. And... We should pray for peace. And I pray that, that people can be heard and that people can understand each other and people who are different and people who are mad at each other and people who disagree can come together in peace. We pray for that as people who believe in the gospel. We work for that as Christians. But we always remember in the back of our mind the peace that this world gives will always be fleeting because we are, we are broken, we are flawed. And we sin sometimes. And people mess up. And so, and sometimes in life we try to find our peace in things of the world. We think, well, if this relationship will finally make me happy and give me peace, this occupation will finally give me peace in my soul, this thing out here will give me peace, but it never, ever delivers. But the one person who can deliver, the one person who can bring peace to your fear, the one person who can bring peace to your anxiety, it's Jesus. And how do you get that peace? Well, it goes back to what he said in the verse we read before. You trust in him and you believe in him and you give him your devotion, your life, and your faith. You enter into relationship with him because that's what he made you for. He made you to have a relationship with him. And Jesus says that and he says, okay, look, look what he says. He says, I give you my peace. And since he's saying I give you my peace, he says it again. Don't let your heart be troubled. And do not be afraid. Now, whenever Jesus says something, I try to stand up and listen to it. And if Jesus is telling me, don't be afraid. You know, so many times in the Gospels, in so many situations, Jesus looks at his disciples and says, don't be afraid, guys. And he says the same thing to you. You know, another thing about the reason we, we don't have to be afraid is because we have peace with God. You know, sometimes I think we have this huge overlying fear of what comes next. Or what does life hold? Or what happens when I die? But the thing is, all of that is taken care of in Jesus. And we make peace with God. You see, before you have a relationship with Christ, 
we're sinful, and we're at war with our Creator, but through Christ, He makes peace between us and God. And not only are we given peace between us and God, we get adopted into the family, and we get everything that is God's. And that peace with God enables us to make peace with other people. And it enables us, I want you to hear this, to make peace with ourselves. So we can move past our sin, move past our mistakes, and move in to being the man or woman that God wants us to be. And that's why Jesus can say there, hey, the peace I give you is not like the world's peace. It is the best peace. I guess a way that I look at this, if you guys, for those of you who are new, everybody who knows me knows this, I love Krispy Kreme donuts. Who doesn't? Well, since we've been in this pandemic, I have gotten no Krispy Kreme donuts in months. But this past Saturday, I got me some KK. I got some beautiful, fluffy, pillowy, lemon-filled, sugary goodness. Here's the thing. I'd had some donuts along the way over the last couple of weeks. I'd had some from, you know, some grocery stores. They were all right. I'd had some that were pre-packaged that you get at the convenience store. I had the little round, little Debbie ones. Y'all are going to be like, you're a diabetic, dude. No, I work out. But uh, I got me my KK, and it was the best. Nothing can compare. I may go get one when I get done with this. That's how the peace of God is, man. It's the best. Nothing can compare. And once you get that, you don't want a substitute. You don't want second best. You don't want the frozen donut lemon-filled thing that's, that tastes like chemical lemons. You want the real deal. It's the same way with Jesus. And that leads us, okay, to be able to combat our fear because we have peace with God. Now, here's the problem with that. Fear not only robs you of your peace... But it also robs you of love. That is one thing I've just noticed as I, as I look at the landscape of our society right now. I'm seeing a lot of people, because they are fearful, they are not able to love the people around them. Fear will cause you to fear people who are different than you. Fear will cause you to fear people who have different viewpoints than you do. Fear will cause you to... To not have the ability to love your neighbor as yourself. By the way, that's a commandment from Jesus. And so here's something we got to do. Don't let fear rob you of your ability to love other people. And the reason I say that is because in this conversation that Jesus is having with these guys, it's, it takes place over a bunch of chapters in the Gospel of John. In chapter 13, before he tells them, don't be troubled, guys. Don't be afraid. He says this to them. Listen to what he says in John 13, 34. He goes, a new command I give you. All these guys grew up Jewish. They, knew, they had 600 commands. And Jesus is like, listen, I'm giving you one. Love one another as I've loved you. So you must love one another. Jesus is saying there, hey guys, uh, he will go on in the verse after that. We didn't include it for you, but he'll say, that's how people will know you're my disciple. That's how people will know you belong to me. You know, uh, get this. The mark of a mature Christian is not how much Bible knowledge you have in your head, but it's how much love you can give to the world you live in. I'm not saying you shouldn't study your Bible. You shouldn't grow, you shouldn't have knowledge, but the purpose of that ultimately leads not for you to be puffed up or prideful or think, I know so much of the Bible and I'm better than those sorry sinners. It's just for you to become more like Him and love people. But you see, fear gets in the way of that. And Jesus here is saying, I love one another as I've loved you. How did He love you and how did He love me? Well, He sacrificially gave Himself for people who were nothing like Him. He was sinless. He was perfect, and He died for you, and uh, you're not perfect, and neither am I, and you're not sinless, and I definitely ain't. Paul would write elsewhere, Paul would say that uh, He loved us before we ever loved Him. You want to know the standard of your love, because it's really easy to love people who you're not afraid of. It's really easy to love people who you 
agree with, who vote like you, act like you, believe like you do, post all the things on Facebook that you like, you smiley face, you thumbs up. But Jesus went to a cross hanging there. People put him on that cross. Jesus looks up at the heavens and says, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And in case you're like, well, I didn't put Jesus on the cross. Sure you did, and sure I did. Because he had to go there for my sin and your sin. And he loved you before you ever loved him. And, and, and he, he wasn't afraid to go through that for you. And so I guess what I'm trying to say is, okay, don't let your fear rob you of your ability to love people. Don't let fear keep you from living in faith because faith ultimately, you know, Paul would say faith, hope, and love, the greatest of these is love. Faith, hope, and love all go together. And when fear kills your faith, it leads down a path where you can't love. And as a Christian, you got to love, man. And so, you know, we look at this and say, okay, I, I, I get that, I understand that. This is challenging, challenging for me. I've told y'all more than once that I'm an old Marine. I don't, you know, they talk about fight or flight. I don't have a flight mechanism. I usually want to fight, but I'm, I'm growing in that. But how do we apply this? Well, there's a statement I made about two months ago in a sermon series we did called um, You're Not the Boss of Me, where we talked about emotions and things. And I made a statement in there. It, it, it's not original to me. It's original to a guy named John Acuff. But I think it is so appropriate that it needs to be said again. And it's this. You know how you can take these words of Jesus? Feed your faith, not your fear. Ask yourself this question, okay? What am I feeding into my life right now? I'm going to say this like a broken record. Guys, some of y'all need to turn the television off. You need to take a hiatus from social media for a little while. And you need to read your Bible. Because you're consuming things that just got you nutted up and crazy and fearful. And you're not feeding your faith, you're feeding your fear. What do you need to do to feed your faith, not your fear? For me, it's Scripture, but it's also being around people. Socially distanced, of course, responsibly. That feed my faith. And don't feed me into the fear that I see going around. People that will help me to understand better. People that will help me to be like Jesus. People that will help me to grow. People who I see that I know love me, love God, and love the church. And they don't got to agree with me on everything. So just ask yourself this question. Are you feeding your faith? Are you feeding your fear? If you've been feeding your fear, well, kill it. And go do the things you know that will feed your faith. Hey, if you need help with that, send us an email. We'll help you to dig into what you need to do. And so, hey, that's, that's the thing. We see here, Jesus is calling us, and he's saying that we don't have to be afraid, and, and we don't. We can live with faith, and we can live with the tension of our fear and our faith, knowing that we can trust the one who has power over this world. We can trust the one who is going to see us through this season. And we can trust the one who will ultimately, at the end of the day, even if we don't get everything in this world we think should happen, he will bring justice one day. Because he's perfect, holy, just, and, and loving. And so, okay, so we get that. And, and to close, I want you to think about this. I'm a cocker. I, I share that sometimes. And I... I it has taught me a lot of valuable lessons being on the river. And one of those is this, is you've got to get back in the river. And what I mean by that is, you don't let fear keep you out of the river after you've had a bad day. I have had some bad days on the river. I had a bad day a week ago with my friends. I swam in a rapid. Sometimes those swims can be okay and harmless, and sometimes it can be really scary. And anybody's paddled to tell you, when you have a scary swim, it gets in your head, and... and you get weird about going down that rapid again. You get weird about getting in the river. But the thing is, if you're going to, to keep progressing in your sport, you got to get back in the river and you got to run the rapid. And so I say to you guys, some of you have been so um, burdened by your fear and so captivated by it, you got to get back in the river. And the river that you're called to float in is the river of love. Stop letting your fear keep you from loving people that aren't 
like you. Get back in the river. That's my thing. So, feed your faith. Don't feed your fear. And be willing to step out on a limb and love somebody that's different than you and not like you. Next week, Caleb's going to talk about how we deal with our anxiety, and I'm really excited about that. Before we get to that, let's say a word of prayer. Let's pray, guys. Father, we love you. We thank you, God, that we have such encouraging words from Jesus, that he stood there with a group of men who were no different than we were, Lord, that were confused. Their world, their culture, everything was getting turned topsy-turvy. They didn't know what to expect. What they thought to expect from him was about to be radically different, but better. And God, as we find ourselves maybe in some seasons and things like that, may we understand, Lord, that we have to hold on to our trust in you, know that you've got us, know that you've got us in our circumstances, know that our peace doesn't have to be robbed, and know, God, that no matter what, we are called to not let fear keep us from loving others because you showed us what that looked like. And if you loved us, God, then we don't need to be afraid to love everybody that we come into contact with. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Guys, I'm so glad that you could uh, join us today for our online experience. And I just want to say thank you for tuning in with us and, and engaging with us in this stuff. And I want to remind you, if you've not yet done so, fill out your digital connection card. We'd love to have a record of your visit. And there's places on there for comments. And if you've got something you need help with, or you want to make a comment, or you want to enter in a conversation, you've got questions about what we talked about today, we'd love to hear from you. Uh, that really encourages us uh, as well. And uh, one last reminder, if you'd like to partner with us through giving, you can do that through our online platform. And uh, we appreciate your gifts. I will see you guys next week online, but I will not be the one teaching. It will be Caleb Simmons, our Connections Pastor, and I'm really stoked about it. He has an amazing message planned for you. If you deal with anxiety, you do not want to miss this one. I will see you guys next week.